gentlemen, you are going to protect yourselves at all times. You're going to obey my instructions at all times. Keep fighting until I tell you to stop. Now touch gloves if you want. Step back. Final instructions there for referee Rich Mitchell. Five five-minute rounds for their big gold belt, should they need them. Mason the Dragon Jones in the grey and red camo. Joe McColgan in the black tie shorts. Let's go. No touch of gloves, we are underway. Yeah, it looked like Mason actually motioned over the Joe and said, we're not touching gloves. Straight down the business, please. Big shots to start from both fighters. Both guys getting tagged. The Colgan working from the clinch here, as is Jones. Absolutely no waiting around. So it be interesting to see whether uh, Mason decides that he wants to take this to the ground at any point. But as you said, they're unbelievably well-rounded. You know, history taught us that Mason Jones would rather have a fist fight, but if there's one guy that's going to oblige him in that regard, it's Joe McColgan. So maybe we will see a, a more rounded strategy from the Dragon this time. Or maybe he just wants to go out there and try and take McColgan's head off. Yeah. McColgan, no slouch on the ground himself. Very, very well matched fight. And it's one of those contests that Cage Warriors management and matchmakers predicted that they may have to make later on in the year if they, both these guys kept winning but you know these extraordinary circumstances we're seeing it here tonight McColgan looking for oh my a, word. a guillotine there no, no, he was looking for a, what looked like a brabo it could have been I couldn't see whether he trapped the arm but the length of his arms allowed him to get into some very awkward positions from standing there that was really interesting that he'd even think about doing that because of course uh, Mason could have just dumped him to the floor as soon as he jumped up but decided not to McColgan giving Mason Jones a lot to think about early here. Nice left hook and a shot back from Jones. Both guys landing heavy shots there. McColgan with a nice right and a left hook. Jones comes over the top with a right hand. All of these strikes are thrown with a lot of intent there. They're not feeling each other out. He's straight away going for the finish. Jones using the kicks very well in the early offing here to just dictate the distance on the rangier fighter. Another snapping leg kick from Jones. Oh, huge body shot, the leg kick back from McColgan. Really crisp, clean striking from both guys here. It's funny, they're mixing up, they're like uh, a little bit of that far range, they're mixing up, throwing some uh, some, some calculated shots, and then they go, nah, let's just get it, let's just get stuck in and, and, and brawl with each other for a couple of seconds. But Mason uh, got Joe against the cage again, it's going to be interesting to see. I want to see uh, Joe start working that mad submission attempt from standing with those long, lanky arms, uh, or to see what Mason's going to do. Looking for a takedown now. Just trying to body lock him to the ground, probably not going to be successful, but if he manages to get a leg on the inside there and trip him, there's a good chance he ends up on top. Well, you'd think that Jones would be able to bully his man in the clinch in terms of just, just pure power and strength, but the, the length and awkwardness of McColgan could help him here. Yeah, so if you think about it, when someone's much taller, uh, it's easier to get underneath them, but it's very difficult to get them off the ground because you're at your limit and they've still got their feet very firmly planted. So he's going to have to uh, attack low uh, or look to trip one of the legs. But the problem is if you attack low and they get an underhook on you, they're going to be able to raise that underhook very high, raising your level above them, and then you know, Mason's going to struggle to take Joe down. So what, what he's doing here, looking to work the leg, trap a leg, and then bring him to the ground, is probably the best thing that he can do at this point. Yeah, this is the first time in a five-round fight for either of these men, so perhaps Jones playing the long game here, thinking, you know, there's four more rounds after this. You, you can't street fight for five rounds. It's not possible. But at the same time, what he's doing right now is really energy draining. It's very high output. He's, he's, he's not just holding him against the fence. He's Big trying D. to drag him around at the same time. Big D from McColgan, but Jones landed a nice left hand in that exchange. Yeah, finding success with those leg kicks. I think that's a good part of his strategy here. Jones has hammered that lead leg. Nice shots from McColgan. Jones firing back. Really back and forth in the striking here. That's exactly what we expected and predicted. Oh, nice combination from Jones. Sends McColgan back into the cage. But McColgan firing back with a jab. Spinning back kick from Jones. Just a couple of inches short. Another huge leg kick from Jones. 
Oh, Jones. Oh, oh, oh no. Hit. It's a big knee. McCogan goes down. Jones firing up. Oh, it's over. Oh, Unbelievable. Mason, the Dragon Jones, is the new Cage Warriors lightweight champion of the world.